Hey everyone, Liberty Dad here. Today, I wanna to talk about the culture war. I will answer three different questions that I think are very valuable for the Liberty community. Number one, what is the culture war? Number two, what does it mean to fight in the culture war? And number three, should libertarians engage? And if so, how? So with that, everyone we're back and as you've noticed I'm actually not inside I'm outside checking out some new backgrounds I didn't really like the use of the green screen for everything I kind of wanted to have like a little bit of a real feel so we're testing this out we'll see how it works obviously I cannot control the noise you know from cars that go by or you might even be able to hear people working in the background so let me know in the comments how it turns out um, and you know maybe i'll just do something different or maybe i'll continue it who knows we'll see um, but for right now we get the view of the beautiful lake behind me so first and foremost what i want to talk about is the culture war today and you may recall if you saw the last video that i did where i kind of went through and i evaluated the classical liberal caucus of the libertarian party i evaluated their report of the libertarian party and part of that was a segment on the culture war. So what I wanna do is really quickly, let's go ahead and play that segment for just a moment, and then we'll come back and we'll start talking about the culture war and you'll understand what it is that I'm trying to do with this particular episode. So let's play that. You know, I hear a lot of voices claiming the Libertarian Party should avoid the culture war. What I don't hear are voices that acknowledge that many members from all sides engage in the culture war on a very regular basis. The truth of the matter is that the culture war is part of libertarian culture, whether we are willing to admit it or not. Now, you might rightfully challenge back by asking me to qualify that by saying, DL, compared to who that isn't. Well, as it turns out, I was reminded of a perfect example just before sitting down to finish preparing for this episode. On Memorial Day, after a trip to the zoo with the family, we were all at home in the kitchen eating. My son told Alexa to play The Floor is Lava, a favorite song of his and many other children. Many of you may know that my wife was born and raised in Indonesia, coming here for college and staying thereafter, clearly to meet me. Indonesia is within the Ring of Fire, a region of the planet known for volcanoes and earthquakes. Indonesia has 76 current active volcanoes. I looked at my wife and I jokingly asked, I, I, I'm not joking, I actually said this in a joking manner. Since there are so many volcanoes in Indonesia, is this song offensive to Indonesians? My wife looked at me and sharply and very impolitely said, who the heck cares? And that is her answer to even the hot button culture war topics. She literally refuses to engage. She has no time for it. She doesn't engage with her version and then just later label it being principled or what have you. She simply refuses. Okay, so in this particular episode, what I want to do is expand upon my words because there's this big, huge debate within the libertarian community of whether or not libertarians should fight in the culture war or whether they should, whether they should not. And my argument is everybody basically already is. So now what we need to do is kind of define that, you know, work it out as far as what does it mean? So I wanna answer three different questions today. And those questions are why? Uh, or what is the culture war in the first place? And then number two, what does it mean to fight in the culture war? And then lastly, should libertarians engage in the culture war? And if so, how? The culture war is basically conflict between groups. That is regarding our values, our beliefs, and our practices. So let's Think about a couple of examples here. Um, you got homeschooling versus public education. On one hand, people that prefer homeschooling say that parents are best suited to educate their children. They know their children better. They can give them the attention that they need. 
On the other hand, you've got those who prefer public education and they say, look, you know, we need a government to oversee things. We need to make sure that everybody's getting the same level of education and we need to make sure that, you know, what they're being taught is quote unquote legitimate. Uh, other arguments or, or other examples, I mean, of the culture war would be things like abortion, where you have this argument of, hey, this, uh, this entity is its own life and therefore it needs to be protected. And other people who say, well, this is not life. And so it really is a matter of my body, my choice. And then we also have things like, say, prostitution, the drug war, so on and so forth. So all of these things kind of relate to the drug war, I mean, to the drug war. They all relate to the culture war because these are things that we determine whether or not they should be permitted in society or how they should be permitted and how people should be allowed to engage in these different practices and beliefs and what their values should be. I think when it comes to what does it mean to fight, the first thing that we must absolutely do is split this conversation into two different elements. You have commentary and then you have action. Commentary is going to be our observations about the world. That's where we sit down and we make arguments about what we see, whether this is a good thing or whether it's a bad thing. What does it mean? What should we strive for? What's ideal? So on and so forth. But then we also have action. That's where we take this commentary, our observations and our arguments, and then we go put them into practice. And it can be practice, like say, with a local organization. Maybe you're with your church and the church has decided that they believe a certain thing and so therefore if you want to be a member of that particular church or even an organization but if you want to be a member of the organization then you have to follow these particular rules and practices you have to agree that you have these particular values and uh, but then it goes further from there you see that people sometimes will want to take it and then instead of just the organization they want to implement it socially like among everybody whether or not you're in a particular organization or not. This is where people end up going to their local governments or where they go to their state government or their national government, right? Like we, we see people, they will go out and they will fight against something that they don't like and they will request, say, an audience with the Supreme Court. So this is, this is the culture war in many cases being put into practice or attempting to put it into practice. But I think what ends up happening is that most, mostly what it means to fight is simply run to government and say, hey, this is what I believe. You need to be the deciding factor and uh, hopefully you will agree with me and you will impose my values, my beliefs, my practices upon other people. So lastly, the big question is, should libertarians engage in the culture war and how? Well, as I said earlier, I think that libertarians already engage in the culture war. But to answer the question whether or not we should, I believe, yes, the answer is uh, that, we should, uh, that, we, that we should be engaging in the culture war. But what I think is that we need to, like I said back in the last portion where what does it mean to fight, I think this is where we have an opportunity to shine, where we can look and we can say, all right, look, First of all, there's commentary and then there's action, right? So what does that mean altogether? Well, I think for libertarians, because of the way we are, we're not Republicans, we're not Democrats, we're not liberals necessarily, we're not conservatives necessarily. Um, you, you may have people in the libertarian community who are conservative personally, such as myself, and then you have other people who are more liberal. Um, and the difference between libertarians and Democrats and Republicans is that we, we tend to want a lot fewer laws. Uh, we want a lot less government. Um, and that, that, really, that really boils down to two major groups. You have the, groups, the group that says much, much fewer laws. Um, and then you have your anarchist um, and what, who say like hey, maybe no government whatsoever, right? Um, but at a minimum, it is taking our views and our values and saying the state, the government needs to be involved a whole lot less. So how does that translate into whether or how we fight the culture war? Well, I think what we need to first and foremost do is engage in a lot more commentary. The commentary needs to be simple and plain. It needs to be something where if I were to grab a neighbor that's walking by and pull them over and then ask him to just give me a topic that's they're passionate about, 
I need to be able to have a conversation with them at a very simple uh, level. I don't need to engage in very deep philosophical conversation with them. What I need to do is I need them to understand where my position is in relationship to this idea that they have presented me. But I think ultimately we can do three things. We'll spray, you know, I love threes. In my videos, you'll see me talk a lot in, in, in groups of three. First and foremost thing, I think we need to figure out what items we can safely ignore. Um, there are some things that I think just don't really matter and we don't have to fight every single battle. This is literally an example of, or this is literally just saying, choose your battles. Not everything on the culture war front needs to be fought. And, and that may include something that you're really passionate about, but we have to decide where we are going to put our energy. Then once we've decided where we put our energy, then I think the second thing that we do, and this is what we should do the most, is engage in a lot of commentary. Like I said a moment ago, the commentary can be in the form of podcasts, it can be in the form of books, it can be in the form of blogs, it can be getting out into the world and talking to people and letting them know where we stand or how we view these, these particular topics. And then lastly is engaging in action. And that action has to be uh, in accordance with our own values and beliefs. So if we believe that government should not be nearly as involved in the things that it is, then we need to start seeking out how can we either pull back government or where it really, really is important, how we can get the government in involved but still stay at a, a, at a minimal level. Okay, so let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, one of the things that's been raging lately is this issue over drag queens and children. And I have been very, very clear and outspoken that I think that drag is not appropriate for children, plain and simple. And I'm not gonna do the whole argument here, but I believe that dra drag is not at all appropriate for children and that children should not be attending drag shows. However, that doesn't necessarily translate into me advocating for more government. I think in this particular case that we can have a social conversation without government and I believe that most people believe that drag is not appropriate for children. So therefore, what we really need is just to have a nice heated debate socially and what that would translate into without any government is simply a, uh, a society where it's looked down upon with parents who take their children to drag. And I think that stigma would be sufficient, right? Now, will it, will it serve every single case? No, there will certainly be parents who will take their children to a drag show and the stigma does not bother them. But I think that far, far more parents would actually fall in line with this stigma. And I hate to say the word fall in line, but effectively that's what's happening. And I think that this is the way that we, we get the results that we want in this particular area. Now, because I don't believe that parents should necessarily be punished for it, um, that doesn't mean that I think it's a free for all in its entirety. There have been, uh, where there have been videos that have come out where they're showing children as performers. So I think that would be a particular area where my sense of limited government would in fact be appropriate. And so I have actually said that while I would not ban drag shows, nor would I create punishments from the government, only from the government, for parents who would take their children to drag shows, I would be willing to impose some sort of legislation that does not permit uh, young children to partake in drag shows themselves, that is, be a performer. And that's because I believe that the children simply don't have the capacity to uh, to consent to the sexualization of their bodies. They don't have the capacity to understand what it is that some of these adults out there are gaining the entertainment from. So therefore, to me, that's an appropriate use of government in this particular case. But again, I think a lot of this starts with having that conversation, having that commentary. We need to do a lot more writing. We need to do a lot more blogging. We need to do a lot more videos like this very video right here. And, and, and that starts with, first and foremost, identifying what we can safely ignore. Because the fact of the matter is there are, is a lot going on in society and we simply cannot address everything. But what I think it's incumbent for libertarians is to show the world how this paradigm could work. This paradigm where, okay, some stuff we ignore, 
some stuff we comment on or most you know may a lot of stuff we comment on um, and then after we're done commenting that is we're writing writing we're done arguing we're, ha we're done having these, de these debates then we settle on what is the most absolute necessary to get government involved so folks I hope that this clears up a little bit about what the you know the the, the position of the culture war should be for the Libertarian Party and its members. And that position is very, very simple. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of cover it one more time really, really briefly. And that is simply to say, look, yes, we should be involved in the culture war, but that involvement should be leading the way and showing people that we can safely ignore some things. We can have a lot of debate on other things, but then when it comes down to it, we need to be very diligent and judicious about the things that we're going to use government to get involved in. And I think that's our place in society. And I think that distinguishes us very much from the Republican and the Democrat parties because it seems like both of them are fighting like hell to have their way implemented in society. You see it right now. You see, uh, you know, here in Florida, the Republicans are running wild with legislation and not all that legislation do I necessarily agree with, even if I agree with the core and fundamental issue that underlies that legislation. I just think that what, what our job is as libertarians is to say, no, we can have that debate publicly, and more than likely this debate can be resolved without the use of government, or at least at a very minimum, the, the least amount of government possible. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that like button, that bell, all that good stuff. Um, and let me know in the comments what you think, whether I've missed a good point or whether I've made some good points. But until then, see you next time, folks. And make sure to stay safe and guard your liberty.